Hello and welcome to Circuit Thierry Sicote, just southwest of Bordeaux, France, for the 5th of 25 races of this year's TM Master Cup Series Tour, marking the beginning of the European Tour. This 15-turn course is one of the most popular on the circuit among both drivers and fans alike, but you'll notice there is a change this year. Word Turn 15 is used to be a chicane, however after a GT flew over a wall there last year after clipping a curb, that turn was hastily put in and it is ready for this year's race. There has been no problems all throughout practice here on this former Grand Prix circuit. This track is very fast, it has a lot of elevation changes, some of them admittedly a little bit more awkward than what we're used to seeing. Fuel and tire strategies have created some wild finishes here in the past. 46 cars will take the grid here today, and on the pole is the reigning champion and winner here last year, Arto Kekkonen. Adrian Devereaux flanks him on the front row, the crowd favorite here. Saul Fischel, I was booed in driver introductions to a level I have never heard before in my life, and David Krikorian on the outside of row two. Cameron Taylor and Kurt Pliskin in row three. Castaneda and Joe Olenek in row four. Row five, Chris Davenport and Liv Eklund finally out qualifying a teammate. Tom Moore is on the inside of row number six alongside Scott Stoidler, the fastest promoter's option. Going back to row seven, Ian Cooper and an excellent effort from John Dilks. Ingrid Hadeland in row eight alongside Greg Woodard in car 41, who was amazing here last year. Alessandro Rossini and Zelda Ashby should be looking forward to this race. They were both quick in practice. Ryan Matthews in a purple car today and Lucas Grabber, an amazing effort there. From the German, Scott Bates, Ben Atkins in row 11, because Nietzsche is faster than what his qualifying indicates, and Su Xiaoyu, the, fa the first driver ever from mainland China, in another promoter's option, the Maggie Chow Casey Racing entry. Williams and Savaral in the row 13. This is Williams' debut. Ike Durbin and Gaspar D'Souza in row 14. Melanie Klavano, winner here previously, is in with a promoter's option in the third Lynx car. And Gareth Hunt in row 15. Row 16, Ruiz, one of the heroes of the midfield early on this season. And Craig Yancer. Packer Carroll and Brandon LaRoe are both looking for more in the race. Chuck Johnson and Richard Scott is on the grid today, replacing car 79. That is a second Tenair Motorsport, being the second Tenair Motorsports car. Truman Ellison and Trek Tauger. Uh, Tauger, of course, going for the Independence Trophy. Tony Durbin, not, not really a good weekend for Tony and Zach Webster. Mark Verall, TM Europe competitor, and Morgan LeFay in row 21. Uh, Daniel Lechleiter, the slowest car to put in a tie. However, he had an engine failure during his qualifying lap. Josh Marshall, Kevin Sai, and Fernando Costa all making their debuts as well. None of them posted a time in qualifying, and they were sorted by their practice speeds. The lights are out, and away we go. Kakadin gets a pretty good start. Devereaux a little slow off the line. David Krikorian, great start in car number 13. Pliskin gets off the line pretty well. Castaneda, pretty slow start in a little further back. Heading into turn one, Devereaux giving Krikorian room. But Arto Kakadin unchallenged as he sweeps into the lead of the race. And looks like uh, almost everyone okay. Yes, everyone's gotten through turn one okay. Some of the back markers a little strung out. Bit, bit wise for some of those back there, a lot of rookies back there. Uh, here is Cameron Taylor in car number seven who got off the line pretty, really good off the line. Now Scott Stoidler is off the track in car 26. He's gonna have to, oh, Stoidler rejoins, bit awkwardly into Joe Olenek and into Cameron Taylor. All three of them are off. That's not what any of them wanted to see. All three of these guys were contenders for the win today. Scott Stoidler uh, was in this race with a promoter's option as uh, he has been one of the more uh, well-received American drivers here in France, um, doing being able to do TV, uh, being able to do some TV interviews in French helps Stoidler's case anyway. And uh, not only that, uh, of all of the American teams, Hot as Walter Racing has always gone. Uh, always been one of the more well-received teams, and having Adrian Devereaux as a driver in the past probably doesn't hurt. I can't say I'm surprised, although I don't think there's much to really look at here. He's going around for a lot of damage to the back of that 26 car so after just a couple of corners looks like if anyone's going to carry the banner for hot as walter racing today it's going to have to be dk in this 13 car as krikorian challenging arto kakinen kakinen defending uh, a little aggressively there uh turn 13 has been a bit of an interesting place uh We've had a lot of cars defend uh, defend their line of being able to do so, but uh, usually that hasn't gone too well. A lot of cars have gone off over there, despite how simple of a turn that, that looks. Excuse me. Gregorian already sizing up Kakinen, and uh, he has been one of the quicker cars in practice. That uh, that car has always gone particularly well here. As we're looking back at Melanie Klavano in car number 62, 
Uh, this num the number 62 is normally allocated to Independence Trophy uh, contender uh, the Voiles Racing Team, but uh, that number is on loan to Lynx Racing for this race and this race only because we understand this is just a one-off effort for Clavino in this uh, uh, nice-looking car. She is going to be running in a lot of endurance races. Uh, she's going by uh, Su Xiaoyu. Or, uh, oh, S Clavino really not giving a lot of space there. Really squeezing the Chinese driver over. And uh, about Su about uh, Su and uh, uh, Sai, uh, those two drivers are enter were given promoters options because of their class win at Le Mans last year. And here is John Dilks in car number 68. Now, this is a car that I wasn't expecting to have such a, a good start, and he really did. He's up to 7th. And also Ashby in the 55, excellent starts for the two of them. I don't think anyone, whoa, Ashby really getting aggressive here. I don't think anyone's really expecting John Dilks to be able to hang on to that position. Uh, I think the, the most people are expecting him to just slide back through the field and we'll just have to see how far he's able to, uh, or what he's able to defend. But um, this is honestly a great start for the New Jersey journeyman. Um, and this could be the start of uh, better things to come for Team Timothy, especially since they were awful in the first two events this year, but they've really picked it up since. Going a bit further back, here's Marc Verra, the uh, French driver who has been, uh, he's been in the TM Europe Series for the past three years. Uh, he's been eighth in the championship twice, um, but there's not that many people that end up running that series full time, I think it should be noted. And uh, Verra has been one of the more regular competitors in that series. Scored a couple of wins there last year. Uh, but he is also one of the older drivers in the field. He's 43 uh, to be making his Master Cup debut, and he's had a bit of an eventful weekend. He's been off the track a few times, but uh, no, no very serious damage to that car, uh, thankfully. And we've had some fairly scary... Oh! I jinxed him, didn't I? Wouldn't be a Master Cup Series race without a bit of commentator's curse, wouldn't it? It's not the scary... It wouldn't be the scariest incident we've seen, because he's been off there a few times. Um... Of course, the Tauger, the uh, the uh, Trek Tauger's car actually had a fire on it in pra after uh, practice one. Now we're going back here to another one. Here is Kevin Sai, car number 88. Of course, he in the Maggie Chow KC Racing. He is the KC part of that. He is, of course, teamed up with Hong Kong actress Maggie Chow to get this team together. Oh, contact with the Lenick! Oh, contact between the 88 and the 23, and Lenick goes off. Sai keeps it going. Now Kevin Sai. Is in his 40s. He's more as well. He's also mostly known as an endurance sports car driver, and he, his career has been going on for a while. But this is his first Master Cup start. Um. Anyways, back with David Krikorian and Adrian Devereaux doing battle here. Two of the drivers who got the probably the two drivers that got the uh, most reaction from the crowd. Uh, David Krikorian uh, being challenged now by Devereaux in that uh, very patriotic bright yellow car. I don't think there's much to review with that incident, honestly. Uh, that looked just like a standard racing incident, especially since, uh, given what corners that was in. Um, oh, we'll see how that pans out. Anyways, Devereaux, as you see, takes over second place um, in this in that 74 car. Gregorian now giving a run at Devereaux again. A uh, bit of a crossover here. Devereaux gives him plenty of room. Uh, there is another battle going on behind it. Devereaux is able to defend that very, very adequately. And uh, the uh, ticker there needs, uh, obviously not, is showing where they are across the line last time by. So here is Kurt Pliskin and Chris Davenport doing battle for fourth. Kurt Pliskin in the Wild Stallions World Tour um, a paint job there. And it's an excellent looking paint job. And uh, the Wild Stallions still together after so many years, but they're having a... Uh, Pretty excellent showing here today in that on uh, Kurt Pliskin's car, uh, and as Davenport goes by, and um, good to see uh, uh, Power Singer Incorporated getting pretty uh, pretty innovative with some of their uh, sponsorship. It looks like, uh, however, it has been a bit of a nightmare for me, honestly, in order to kind of keep up with what color car that is every single race. Here is you have Jenny Kuznetsov in car number 15, who has also had a pretty good start. The Russian, uh, of course, is still looking for his first TM Master Cup Series victory, but he is, um, he's been doing quite well this year so far, aside from uh, Road Atlanta, where uh, he, by his standards, he had an awful weekend, and uh, having a good sh good showing here to kind of amend that in this car number 15. Oh, a bit wide there. Now, uh, there are two different, two very similar paint jobs that Kuznetsov will be running this year. This uh, apparently will be the only time um, 
we'll see the 15 car, the last time we may see the 15 car running with the blue stripe going around the bottom. Minor details, I know, as Ashby begins to challenge Pliskin ahead of him. Because Nietzsche really kind of uh, showing Tony Durbin, um, uh, kind of showing Tony Durbin up this week as we see Verra already in the pits at car 31. As uh, Saul Fischel in the eight is really going backwards. Now he is, did not really have a very good start off the line. Um, I think only qualifying third saved him from uh, falling back further than he did is because Nietzsche just takes him to the cleaners there. Uh, I can't say that penalty is a surprise. As we look back at Morgan Lefay in car number 49, this uh, Lefay has shown up, of course, to a bunch of the European rounds, this time with Mirage Motorsports, with whom she's competing with in the European and Canadian series. Uh, of course, part-time in Canada. And that's Brandon LaRoche she's challenging uh, for 30th place. And Tony Durbin back there in 32nd. None of them having a particularly good day so far, though Tony Durbin going forwards at least. Here is Tony, Dur or Tony Durbin's teammate, Yevgeny Kuznetsov, as Pliskin into the back of Ashby, gets a bit sideways. Here comes Kuznetsov, screaming through, and he's going to get Ashby as well. Look at him go. Kuznetsov having a wonderful start to this to this, this, open, this race so far. Good opening stint for Kuzi, uh, who is a much beloved figure with some of the fans in the United States. As here's a, Here is Liv Eklund in car number 11. Now, uh, we got some interesting news about Liv Eklund this week. Um, that there, that before the start of the season, there was a promoter's option that Lynx Racing had entered for her in her home race, the round of Sweden. But uh, that hasn't... Whoa! As more goes off, and she's going to be able to take 11th. As uh, there was a promoter's option for Eklund entered for the round of Sweden, but it's only valid if Eklund's in the third car. Uh, we'll have to get back to that in a second. As Chris Davenport now being challenged by car of uh, car number 15 Tony Durbin or T Tony I'm gonna get those confused all day aren't I Tony Durbin's teammate you have Jenny Kuznetsov I'll get it right eventually um, you know you've only been staring at these cars for so many months uh, and, and it's not like Kuznetsov hasn't been running car number 15 for several years uh, non-stop anyways Davenport uh, is gonna be going backwards a bit as Kuznetsov is going to take fourth Chris Davenport's actually been having a pretty good weekend uh, in that uh, sort of a uh, royal blue 17 car, the Aerotel machine. Anyways, back to Eklund. So the promoter's option that Lynx Racing has for the round of Sweden is only valid if Eklund is in the third car. She is, of course, not in the third car. So there have been some rumors going around that Eklund's time at Lynx Racing as a regular driver might already be coming to a close. I haven't heard anything from Lynx Racing themselves stating that. But we'll have to see what happens with that uh, promoter's option for Sweden. Uh, anyways, uh, here is uh, Eklund's teammate, Ingrid Hadland in car number 19. Who's, uh, of course, fallen behind Melanie Klaveno in the 62. Of course, Klaveno really beginning to scream through the field a bit. But uh, Hadland has been a pretty solid team leader so far from what we can see, as, and has filled the role quite adequately, despite the fact that Hadland and Eklund have been kind of sniping at each other um, in the press whenever... Whoa! One, that's Matthews off in the back. Despite the fact that Hadland and Eklund have been kind of going at each other in the press. Now here is Ryan Matthews. This car is not handling all that well. So six car. Uh, he's got a bit of a handful with him. And that is... That's Sue right behind him in the 80 car. Oh! Sue's going for it! Uh, Sue Xiaoyu is really going for it in that 80 car. This kid... It, now... Now, uh, Sue is actually sort of the main reason why this team is here. He's always wanted to really give one of these cars a run. And Matthews overcooks turn 13. He goes wide. That is a very cleverly set up move. And Sue really putting the pressure in on a driver who's been around a lot longer than he has. Of course, um, Scott Bates now closing in on the 06. Going to try to be able to take the place from him. Oh, around goes Matthews. Scott Bates gave him the old bump. And uh, well, that was more of a dump and run, really. Uh, that was uh, not exactly, uh, it's not going to be looked at too, um, not going to be looked at too, uh, highly by the race stewards, I wouldn't believe, or by the, uh, stewards, anyway. Race stewards, what am I saying today? On board with Scott Bates, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot to review here, as Matthews does pull into his line a little bit, but at the same time, going uphill, Bates is lying into the right, yeah, but Scott Bates laid into him a little bit, and, uh, Gently shoved him out of the way. Uh, I don't think you can really call that anything but uh, sort of a 
Gave him the first bump to sort of signal that he's there and the second bump to say get out of the way. To see it. I don't think the stewards are going to look too highly on that though. As Adrian Devereaux beginning to hound Arto Kakinen to take the race lead here. In that 74 car, Devereaux really, uh, as you see in the background, Kuznetsov has taken over third place. As Devereaux makes a move on Kekinen, that's a bit of an ambitious one, and he's going to get it. Uh, looks like, uh, no, maybe not. Kekinen fighting back. Adrian Devereaux really about to make this one stick around the outside. And is he going to be able to make this one stick? These two drivers off the track of, uh, we understand that they don't necessarily get along all of that well, but... Uh, making this on track rivalry have been fairly interesting since they've had very little contact with each other and there he goes Adrian Devereaux absolutely able to make that stick around the outside that uh, reprofiled last corner already coming into play here now looking back at Catalan trying to make a move on the 90 car there is Sue is really coming on strong here in fact uh, being told that Hadeland and Sue have the two fastest laps of the race so far I'm a little oh bit of a bump there from the 19 of Hadeland, trying to get the 90 to move aside a bit. And Klaveno getting away just a little bit. Ingrid having a look, see if Atkins shuts the door. No, he's not going to be able to have a chance to. Ingrid Hadeland, that car, that 19 car is absolutely hooked up today. Uh, Sue in the background and that 80 car also looking very strong as well. I'm a little surprised there actually that some of these, uh, that some of the part-timers have been as strong as they have been in uh, this season so far especially here is Adrian Devereaux signaling he's gonna peel off Devereaux pitting first in that 74 car uh, if you're gonna be pitting at this point I don't see how you're gonna make it on two stops this is looks like a three-stop strategy to me unless there is a lot of fuel saving going on in that final in the middle and final stints I don't think a three-stop will be able to cut it today but we'll have to see stranger things have happened before Packer Carroll looking at him in the 71. There's that 741 car Trek Tauger I mentioned earlier. And oh, contact! Contact between Tauger and Carroll. Uh, that's going to put Carroll out of it. And uh, that's, that's going to end what's been a miserable weekend for Packer so far. And uh, honestly, honestly, it didn't look like either Carroll or Tauger was going to make that corner anyway. So I kind of wonder if the stewards might give a bit of leniency on the, on the grounds that... Uh, even if Packer Carroll wasn't there, there was no way that uh, Tauger was going to be able to make the make that corner over there because he's been struggling there all weekend, even when that car wasn't having uh, some issues. Gareth Hunt in the 42 doing battle here with Cameron Taylor for position, and Hunt way off course, and Richard Scott as well in that gray and green 70 car. Hunt able to gather it up. Now Hunt's got a rallying background, and I would imagine that came into a pretty good use right there. Mark Verrall has rejoined the race, eh, but he is many, many, many laps adrift. This is going to be the start of what's already a pretty long day for Verrall on his Master Cup Series debut. Uh, we'll have to see how things go for him the rest of the day, but Hassert Racing's the third car. Um, not having a good day, perhaps. As Kekin leaves the pit lane, and I don't see Adrian Devereaux anywhere. A uh, pretty slow stop apparently on the 74 car, but a pretty good stop from Chris Davenport's bunch. Um, that half of the Mitchell and Sons garage is able to get him out right behind David Gregorian. As DK now trying to hunt down Kakinen, but we do have multiple strategies going here. I would admit there are definitely going to be some that are committing to a three stop, some committing to only stopping twice. Uh, so those that are committing to a three-stop are absolutely going to be uh, pounding out some fast laps here. Uh, I would imagine to try to get as much of a gap as possible. Davenport in that 17 car. We really don't know what strategy he's on. But uh, we understand that the Mitchells are more likely to try a three-stop from what we uh, have gathered from them over the course of the weekend. More likely to. Uh, they may have changed their minds. We'll see. Uh, Davenport having a good weekend, though. Uh, and this is a guy who's really needed to have some good press about him because most of Chris Davenport's career has been covered with uh, gravel and uh, uh, some very unflattering press articles about him, even when they weren't intended to be so. Kakinen in car number one and David Krikorian in car number 13 is effectively the battle for the race lead. Kakinen a bit wide and Krikorian is going to be able to get alongside of him and with David Krikorian is going to have a lot of momentum. 
to take the lead on the outside before, well before he even makes the corner as Kakinen is going to have to surrender that lead to him. Kakinen, a bit of a sporting driver, didn't want to cause a collision there. Guess he's uh, going to just have to see if he can get all the grass in uh, and the like off his tires first before he makes another challenge uh, for that position as Kuznetsov in car 15 here. We're looking at the battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Ashby Kuznetsov and Adrian Devereaux as they're trying to chase down Chris Davenport in car number seven. In car number 17. Oh, De uh, Devereaux gonna go and try to get some mom extra momentum going around the outside of this downhill corner. Ashby trying to defend both lanes at once. That's not gonna work too well. But uh, Kuznetsov's got a big uh, head of steam going uphill. Kuznetsov sends it in. They're both a bit wide. Here comes Adrian Devereaux now gonna try to get both of them at once. Devereaux clips the curb a bit. That's going to affect his momentum, and Kuznetsov is in prime position to challenge him on the inside. This is brilliant stuff here for fourth place, as Kuznetsov is going to be able to get the spot back, but he's not able to clear the 74. 74 still on his inside. You know, going into 13, is it going to be able to stick? No, Kuznetsov slides it a bit wide, and now he and Ashby are side by side as Devereaux has the place. Brilliant stuff. We've had almost two-thirds of a lap with two of these three cars side by side and it's never been the same two cars side by side uh, throughout the, that part of the lap as they're now going to get a little bit uh, slightly strung out as here comes the 15 and the 55 losing a bit of ground to Devereaux. Greg Woodard having a good run there behind them in seventh place. Good weekend so far for PSI. Ashby now uh, trying to set up Adrian Devereaux in that uh, in the 74, here comes the 55, trying to peek her nose inside. Devereaux giving, leaving just the bare minimum amount of space. That's uh, not the that little chicane right there is one of the lead uh, is a sequence of corners that is probably oh a bit of contact there, bit of a uh, trading paint there between the 55 and the 74. Devereaux on the curbs into the into the side of the 55. Ashby takes the place. Great move by Ashby. Very, very aggressive move from someone who started a little bit further back than perhaps their qualifying time uh, would have suggested. Devereaux trying to set her up again. And uh, Devereaux trying to see if he can get a good draft out for Kuznetsov, beginning to fall back a little bit. Devereaux putting on a good show here for the home crowd as he sticks his nose inside. Is he going to be able to take the place from Ashby? He's going to have to do it down this run down to turn two. As Kuznetsov sits in the background watching and waiting, so does Woodard and Castaneda. Ashby getting a much better run down into the second corner. Devereaux slides it in on the inside in the 74. Is he going to be able to make this stick? Uh, Ashby not giving him a whole lot of room. Devereaux's got plenty of space to throw it on the inside here. Ashby very wide going up, uh, going up the hill here. And now, De Ashby on the curb! Oh no! Ashby and Devereaux both wiped it out! Ashby, well, well, cut him. Ashby cut, put two tires well out of the curb, skated, slid wide right into the 74, and that, oh, that was a bit too eager. Ashby turned in way too early, and I think Devereaux probably had a... Uh, a uh, very unflattering thing to say to Ashby about that particular move. As now Hadland swinging it wide. Uh, that is Stoidler. That is not for position, but the that battle with the 34 car is. Stoidler, remember, has a time penalty. Yeah? Hadland can't afford to let him go. And uh, Lucas Grabber in that 34 car continuing to make good on his qualifying run. And what a move there by Grabber. Is he's going to be able to make that move stick on the outside? I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to do that, but he was well off almost into the grass. But uh, he makes that one stick. As Greg Woodard now, who has uh, effectively inherited fifth place, is now having a run on Kuznetsov, and that is Castaneda and Fischl back there. And Klavano has moved up into the top ten as well in car number 62. And uh, the third Lynx racing car. Woodard really beginning to hound Kuznetsov now. And oh, a bit of bumper tag there. And Woodard is going to be able to slip on the inside and have a good run on the Russian. And uh, Power Sig Incorporated uh, really has needed a clean weekend so far. Just a clean, strong weekend where nothing goes wrong. So far, so good. At the very, whoa, Kuznetsov. Bit, uh, in a bit too deep, but Kuznetsov having a, uh, 
having a handful with Woodard, who is actually having a very good weekend on the pace department. This is about where PSI really began to pick it up last year. Um, of course, strong runs uh, at Carbondale and Road Atlanta last year, notwithstanding. As Fischl now uh, trying to hang on to uh, Marco Castaneda, but uh, really not having uh, really not having a lot of luck doing so. Now, I did mention in driver introductions that uh, that, that Saul Fischl was booed uh, at a historic volume, and I'm I am 100% serious. I have never heard a driver booed that loudly before in driver introductions. I've heard drivers booed after races and during races, not before a race has even begun. And I have a feeling that might have been because of some interviews Fischl did uh, during uh, leading into the race weekend that weren't exactly very flattering of Adrian Devereaux or some of the other drivers on the circuit, which have not exactly been in, have not exactly gone over that well with the crowd here today. Marco Castaneda beginning to really harass uh, uh, Yevgeny Kuznetsov. Didn't say Tony Durbin this time. As Fischl skates wide, they are trying to... Two drivers going in way too deep there uh, in turn 13, but no contact and no crash. I think you can see why these guys are running at the front of the field. I think uh, as opposed to further back. Uh, uh, Kuznetsov really trying to challenge Kostanyeta to get that place back. And uh, whoa! Kuznetsov able to make it stick. Now, one thing I neglected to mention that Kostanyeta got on my case about was that he was the first uh, that. Uh, he is the first Central American and uh, Indigenous driver to have won a Master Cup Series race because Jose Luis Martinez, who has a Master Cup win to his name, uh, considers himself white. Mea culpa. I will. That was a mistake on my part. Castaneda, the. Uh, but he is not the first Indigenous driver to have won a Master Cup Series race because, of course, of the Yellow Horse Dynasty in the mid 70s uh, with the two uh, Yellow Horse brothers. As uh, Saul Fischl, as you see, takes back seventh from Kuznetsov. As Castaneda really beginning to challenge Woodard, and, uh, and he's going to clear Woodard for. Uh, he's going to take uh, fifth away from Greg Woodard. Woodard trying to meet an immediate crossover there to try to get that position back. And where has the eight car gone? I think Fischl is headed into the pits. That's That looks like a three stop from the eight car. They definitely are having handling problems in that car or something because I don't see why Fischl would have immediately dove off into the pits if that wasn't the case. If he's pitting, then they would begin then coming in on lap 24, uh, which is about when you would expect a three-stop to uh, pitting every eight laps, pitting more for tires than fuel, which is uh, something we are seeing a couple other cars do, uh, do here. As we see a clinic here in defensive driving here from Castaneda, uh, in car number nine and uh, uh, holding off Greg Woodard. And here is Ingrid Hadeland beginning to challenge the 34. That is uh, Lucas Grabert. Cooper sliding in behind him as they're having a good day. Oh, Grabert off into the grass. Oh, hang on. Oh, contact between Lucas Grabert and Joe Olenek. That's a lot of damage to the 34. And that was Craig Yatzer in that uh, dark purple and green car that went off. And Lucas Grabert has undone all of his heroics. Just went far too wide, threw it in too deep, hit a bump on the on the edge of the curbs, and that launched him into the 23 and the 81. As Tony Durbin piles into Lucas Grabert, um, at uh, kind of feel for Grabert here. Now here we're on board with uh, Joe Olenek here. As we're looking ahead, there is Grabber going off. And yeah, that's where Grabber rejoins. That was really Grabber. I don't. Once Grabber is off in the course over there, there's not really anywhere else he can rejoin to. Uh, especially if he's committing to just keeping that car under control and following the racing line. The angle at which those two corners bring uh, give you, there's no good options. There's only the least bad. And that's mostly why those two corners are, well, are widely disliked among uh, most of the Master Cup Series grid. And you wonder why those two corners weren't changed. And the last corner was, as we were just looking at Gareth Hunt, who's running well inside the points. Now, I, remember, I mentioned the Yellow Horse brothers, um, uh, Roger and David, back in the uh, 70s. Um, the uh, sort of heir to that Yellow Horse dynasty, Troy Yellow Horse, is actually Liv Eklund's race engineer. So do you see you do have along uh, 
history of involvement by people of many different colors, and Lynx Racing is a very colorful outfit in more ways than one. Uh, as you see Joe Olenek going around Eklund on the outside, that is a that is a very bold move on someone who was already shown to be one of the bolder rookies in the field. Eklund pushing him out wide. Eklund really shoving Olenek out wide, and that is eh, there was some contact there. Eklund very committed to holding Olenek back there, sho shoving the 23 car back. Oh, I think I see why she was so committed to that. Look who's right ahead of her. The 19. Eklund really trying to get make up some ground there. As here's uh, Tom Moore in the four, trying to get that position back from Gareth Hunt, who is really having an excellent outing here. The Irish driver really having a strong outing. As Saul Fischel in the in car number eight. Uh, we're we looking at yes, this is looking at a replay of him pitting in. As yeah, there we couldn't see anything wrong, so we we're. Just in case there are any fans of him wanting, wondering why he uh, entered the pit suddenly. Uh, can't tell if there's anything wrong. Scheduled. Uh, interesting. Anyways, looking back at David Krikorian, who is leading the race, having put Ryan Matthews' lap down. New fastest lap of the race just been set by Melanie Clavino in car number 62. Interesting. Uh, this 62 car is one of the quickest cars on the track right now. Um... This car is really screaming down the straightaways. Uh, I should I should point out it's fastest speed tra uh, uh, fastest recorded uh, speed in the speed traps. And here is another guy who's having a good day that we haven't really acknowledged. Is Luciano Savarall has worked his way up into the top ten. Black Diamond uh, driver running in eighth position. Of course, Savarall, the um, only Brazilian on the circuit uh, full time as the, as a uh, Krikorian pits and. Uh, He's committing, if that's going to be a very long final stint, if that's a two-stop. But it's certainly doable from here. Stranger things have happened here at this track in the past. I believe Arto Kekkonen pitted with him. As we see um, Kurt Pliss giving car number 16. Bit of bumper tag with Luciano Savarall in that car number 5. Savarall holds on to the position. Uh, Savarall and Pliskin... Uh, two, two sort of underrated drivers on the circuit, and who is that? Mer that is David Krikorian merging from the pit lane. So you can kind of see how much of a gap Krikorian has built over Savarall and Pliskin, and Pliskin's going to get a run in. Krikorian merged cleanly. Savarall was planning a move, and Pliskin was also planning one, and Pliskin looks like he's going to get them both. If I'm DK, I let both these guys go immediately. They're not really on the same pit strategy as me, if I'm DK, that is. However, you may notice everyone getting through there cleanly. That was Harry. Uh, uh, Savarall is going to have a seating that position. And good move by Pliskin in that 16 car. The Wiley veteran able to pick up new fastest lap of the race. 150.862. That is faster than Su Xiaoyu qualified. The, the young man out of China is really, really impressing today. And of course... Uh, uh, Sue and Kevin Tsai uh, both got promoters options after winning their class at Le Mans last year. So they're not exactly unknowns here to the French crowd. In fact, uh, they're also they're, uh, uh, the crowd is quite familiar with them. Pretty fun guys, too. Speaking of another fun team, Lynx Racing. We've got Hadeland versus Eklund again. Grab the popcorn. Hadeland off the course. Eklund's going to take, take what I believe is uh, 16th. As we see Ruiz peeling off into the pit lane. Tim Ruiz has been one of the kind of heroes of the midfield, as I've mentioned uh, many times this year. Hadeland having a pretty good week so far in car number 19. Now, Eglin was, had a, must have had a pretty slow stop for that uh, first pit stop for car number 11. And that must be that is probably why Eglin was back there. And here is Mark Verraw. Kind of wondered how he was going to be as a lap car, honestly. As... Uh, Honestly, I haven't seen too many blue flags waved at him that he hasn't acknowledged. Um, Veron, now he's got, uh, he's carrying too much speed. Okay, hey, he made it through there successfully. Lynx cars are pitting. I think, uh, I have a feeling that not too many people wanted to be around the 31 because uh, predicting his lines has been a little bit of a, uh, little bit of, an, uh, of uh, a science. 
that no one has quite uh, nailed down, at least partic particularly through turn 13. As Chris Davenport in car number 17 is set to make up a ton of ground here. No, maybe not. Maybe not. As there, oh, there it goes. Maybe, there it goes. I thought it was, I was noticing Castaneda, but I didn't also notice the plume of smoke that just came out of the back of the 17. So whatever strategy he was on isn't going to matter because that is an early exit for the Californian and a big disappointment for Davenport. And that is Pliskin leaving the pits. And that is the 80, it's, that's the 80 car. That's Sue. That's an amazing pit. That's some great pit work there by the uh, Maggie Chow KC Racing crew on um, uh, Sue Xiao Yu's car. Uh, and uh, you may notice I'm referring to him as Su Xiao Yu and not uh, Xiao Yu Su, uh, because that is the way you would normally order a, na a name in uh, a Chinese name, and we have not heard from the driver to whether or not to do it that way or in the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the Western fashion. Pl uh, Pliskin trying to hang on as there is Davenport who is slowing. Oh no, Davenport! I guess must have. That must that was a blind corner down there. I don't think Pliskin saw him. I don't I wonder if Pliskin didn't know what side he was on or wasn't told. Or if Pliskin was paying more attention to his mirrors to where the 80 car was. And wasn't paying attention to his windscreen. Now that's awkward, to say the least. And um, scoring here a bit, but uh, no, that is the 88 car. The 88 is a lap down. So David Krikorian in car number. 13 has just lapped Kevin Sai, so scoring a, a tiny bit behind there because when they came across the line, the 88 was behind the 20 and was still on the lead, or was ahead of the 20 and still in the lead lap. Now Kirkorin has lapped D'Souza and is now look, working on Josh Marshall. And I apologize for the Marshall fans. We haven't really had much to say about him, but because it hasn't really been much going on with the 230 car. The 20 of Gaspar D'Souza has had some ongoing issues all day. In fact, both of, the, uh, both of the Ortega cars really have not been up to speed, and that has been a bit of a concern as Gregorian's pitting a third time. This is interesting. Gregorian now putting in a bunch of fast laps now to pit, uh, and now pitting again. It looks like Kekina may have done so also. Castaneda now is going to assume the, uh, the lead of the race, I guess. After fuel numbers were calculated, it turns out a three-stop might be the only way to go. And it's when you make your third stop that matters. Interesting. Uh, Marco Castaneda now is, uh, I think, temporarily in, going to be in the lead here. But that is Kevin Sai in the 88. That's a, very hard to tell the 80 and the 88 cars apart, admittedly. Although having no rear end of that car is probably going to help. Uh, that is Clay Vanoa and Kuznetsov doing battle for what I believe is what I believe is sixth place. 62 car looks very very quick today. Um, and Kuznetsov um, uh, is going to is going to have a going to have a headache trying to hold this place from uh, the Swiss driver as Vera is ahead of him. Um, uh, that's going to be a bit of a nightmare for him, I guess. But um, and uh, was that Vera getting into the back of Woodard possibly? Anyways, Kuznetsov not, uh, doing a great job at holding this position from Klevino. Uh, Klavino, who is not really throwing that car on the inside despite having the pace to do so. Now, in the past, we've said that uh, there have been criticisms of Melanie Klavino in traffic, and I kind of wonder whether or not um, those criticisms have kind of, uh, if those are real or whether or not they're, um, or, or whether or not Klavino is just saving whatever, uh, what, her, saving her equipment for the final few laps as Savarola is actually beginning to catch these two, I think, in the background. Is that red car back there. Here is Cooper in car number two doing battle with Scott Bates in the 16 car. Cooper letting Bates go because they know Bates has a time penalty. Olenek is under investigation, but I don't think that's going to I don't think that's going to come to anything. Um, and then there is more as well as uh, Cooper's letting Bates go maybe, or are they gonna fight this? Uh, and that emerald green octane car. Technically, the, spo the sponsor doesn't really have a home race, but this might be the closest to it. Now, either this or the round, the round of Sweden would be the sponsor's home races. That is a Danish-based company, as Sue has fallen back into the clutches of Ingrid Hadland in the 19. Uh, Hadland gets a good run going downhill to get a run on Sue as they're trying to run down Rossini in car number three. 
who sits ahead of them in, I believe, 13th. A good run so far from Ingrid Hadland, a solid, uh, po solid points finish as the Lynx cars seem to be getting better and better uh, as we go into the season. Esper Corian has caught Castaneda, who has not pit for a final time yet. So you do wonder how much how much fuel saving are you going to need to do a two stop and whether or not it's worth it? This might answer your question. Uh, as the nine really has fallen into the clutches of uh, the cars that, have, that are doing three stops anyway. As Castaneda doing his best to defend that, but I don't think that's going to pay off as Gregorian goes is going to go by as uh, was that more in the background than entered the pits? A lot of blue and black cars in the series. Need some more livery variations. Um, maybe some extra purple or things of the sort, or more red would help. But anyways, Gregorian and Castaneda battling for position, although I would like to point out that uh, this effectively is not much of a battle for position because they do have, because uh, there is a pretty large gap, uh, and uh, Castaneda is, uh, there will be a pretty large gap once Castaneda pits, assuming he does, yeah, Castaneda is bailing, I guess, uh, you could try to go for a two stop for so long, Marco, but eventually you're going to have to uh, abandon that at some point as Kurt Pliskin uh, doing as good of a recovery drive as he possibly can. He's running in. Uh, he is also going to hit the pit lane along with the 90 car, although this, I think, is scheduled. This is scheduled for the 16 bunch. Cameron Taylor is having another pretty strong recovery as he is running in the uh, lower end of the points as Eklund pits in front of him. That's pretty late. That's leaving, that, leaving your final stop until pretty late if you see John Dilks in the background also heading for the pit lane as uh, Taylor and Woodard doing battle for position. This is going to be for seventh, I do believe. Yes, it is. Good day for both of them, especially for Taylor, uh, since he had to recover from an early spin. That wasn't of his doing, and Woodard has had a solid run all day long in that 41 car. Uh, this is exactly what both of these men needed if they're going to make a season-long push for the championship. Whenever something uh, if for Woodard's case, to really get some uh, more points in the board, and for Cameron Taylor, to show that when something does go wrong, and you can recover to a solid uh, points finish here. And here's another guy who is looking for more points, Tim Ruiz, who has been uh, uh, one of the better rookies, and not, not saying something because this rookie class is very strong, but Tim Ruiz has um, really, really got, made a good impression at bringing the Hazard car into the points uh, uh, quite regularly and has been showing a lot of pace that wasn't expected of him uh, if, if you ask me in the preseason who might be uh, uh, some a rookie that might be uh, flying under the radar a bit I don't think I would have picked Ruiz but um, in fact you can check and see who I did pick to be sort of flying under the radar for a rookie and see whether or not I did pick Ruiz but um, Ruiz having a great start to his season and his Master Cup career so far Really turning a lot of heads despite not being in one of the best cars in the series. Bliskin now challenging Devereaux. I think Devereaux's a lap down, and I think he might have not been sure where Pliskin was going. Pl uh, Devereaux's waving to Pliskin to go by him, and Pliskin's just not taking it. He's not taking it. I don't know why. He, I don't know if Pliskin can't see it. Can't see that or not. Okay, if there's a slow car waving you to pass him, you have to go by at some point. Ruiz is taking full advantage of this in that 33 car, and it looks like Ruiz is going to take a place from Pliskin. That uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if Pliskin couldn't see Devereaux waving him past or what the deal was, but he took way too long to go by the 74 car, and uh, that's puzzling, honestly. Uh, here is. Uh, Arto Kekkonen uh, taking and uh, getting around uh, the 20 car of Gaspar de Souza and Daniel Lechleiter in the 10. He's trying to get by Lechleiter in the 10, but he's also closing in on the race leader here. Closing in on David Krikorian in car number 13. We'll have to see if Krikorian is really, ju if, if Kekkonen is just really stronger later in the fuel run or what the deal is here. But also, don't be too hard on Lechleiter and Gaspar de Souza here because those two are in a battle for position and they're letting Arto Kekkonen go. 
All right, now here is Catherine Williams, and she we haven't really mentioned anything about her all day because she's really been kind of running by herself, uh, running her own race, which is what you'd expect and hope for a debutante. Uh, if my math is correct, given the speed that she's running and the speed that the leaders are running, they're going to they're going to encounter Williams before the end of the race. We've got two laps to go, and uh, yeah, this race really has kind of flown by a little bit, seemingly, because Arto Kekkonen has really caught the back of David Krikorian, and we could be in for another for another thriller here in France. Let's see if Krikorian has just been saving what what he has left, or if Kekkonen has just been able to save a lot better than Krikorian has, and has just reeled him in. Uh, I have a feeling uh, the I have a feeling the latter might be the case. Of course, they're going to be coming to take the white flag here. We've seen some crazy runs to the finish here. Remember, Nasova Martinez, Ashby versus Clavino, and of course, Kakinen's win here last year, where he was hounded by Adrian Devereaux for the final five laps. As here is Kakinen trying to have a run in on Krikorian going into turn two for the final time. Williams ahead. Keep it. Look, there's that white car, the 93. Uh, they're going to have to be a bit. They're going to have to be careful with the leaders coming through. They don't want to be. They don't want to impact the battle for the lead here. Uh, and that's uh, that's a lot of pressure to put on a debutant driver like that. But Kakinen beginning to challenge David Krikorian. Krikorian hits the curb. He keeps it under control. Kakinen trying to set him up. He's not going to have many opportunities to do that. Coming down, in, coming down into some of the uphill sections. Is Williams going to pull off to the side? Does Do they know they're behind him? Uh, Williams holding firm, uh, look, but they're a ways ahead. Kekkonen trying to stick his nose in, coming into the hairpin. Williams paying attention in the mirrors. Krikorian sending it in. He goes in a bit deep. Bit of bumper tag between Kekkonen and Krikorian. This is for the win here. Just a couple corners to go here in the round of France. Turn 13 has been such a problem for everybody today. Several cars are gone wide. Everyone keeps control. Is the 93 going to be a factor? Krikorian catching some draft off the 93. They're signaling Krikorian to go by. Krikorian is holding firm. The 93 is going a bit wide, giving room in the final turn. Being a sportsman, Krikorian making a move here. On to go by Williams. Is R2 going to have a run? He's got plenty, he's got just enough time. He's making a move down the front straight away. Is it gonna be, it's gonna be a photo finish? No! Krikorian holds on. David Krikorian just barely hangs on to take the round of France. In a thrilling finish that came down to the, that came down to a lap car that was behaving their best and a drag race down the front straight away with the defending champion. Krikorian scores his first win of the season in a thriller here in France. Whew. Even with the uh, new final corner, we can still get some thrillers out of this track, I see. That strong recovery drive by Cameron Taylor paid off because it got him a podium finish, just beating out Greg Woodard at the end of the day. Yevgeny Kuznetsov completes the top five and Saul Fischl comes home in sixth. Melanie Klavano would have come home in seventh position. However, that car failed post-race tech, and Clavino was disqualified, meaning Luciano Savaral claimed 7th place. How about that ninth place effort from Tim Ruiz? Great outing there for the young American, and Kurt Pliskin as well, rounding out the top 10 after some hiccups earlier in the day. Rossini in 11th, Cooper 12th, great recovery effort from Joe Olenek, and Sue in 14th, great effort on debut from the Chinese driver. Hadland and Eklund sandwich Chuck Johnson. Craig Yonser, a great recovery after an accident earlier. And John Dilks, a solid home to bring home some points for Team Timothy. And rounding out the points, rallying to a 20th, is Gareth Hunt. Look at the Drivers' Championship. Shows that Saul Fischl is still on top over his teammate and Tom Moore. Three-way tie for fourth. And then another two-way tie for seventh. And then you've got another two-way tie for ninth. You can tell this is early in the season, right? Uh, anyways, Arto Kakinen is probably a little bit further back than what he might be expected to be. Uh, Tony Durbin and Yevgeny Kuznetsov are uh, a little bit more evenly matched than I think that point total shows. Uh, but I think uh, 19 points for those two is uh, not as big of a gap as it would be in other cases. Eklund and Hadland, I can say the same for. Uh, I think that we're going to see some big results from the Lynx duo incoming because their rate of improvement has been quite spectacular. Keep in mind there is a point penalty that is still being appealed. Uh, for Eklund, a penalty that I think is rather dubious. 
Scott Bates rounds out the top 20 on 43 points. However, his teammate Cooper is right behind him on 42. One quick look at the Independence Trophy shows that none of the four Independence Trophy drivers had a particularly brilliant outing today. However, I wouldn't expect this to reflect too much on them going forwards, especially since they have three more races still to run. The first of which will be the Round of Sweden at the newly reconfigured circuit in Gothenburg just before the Karyala Grand Prix. Hey there friends, here's some content made by friends of the show, and I highly recommend you check out these videos. However, if you feel so inclined, I put a link in the description of this video to some bail funds for the protests lately. And remember, Black Lives Matter. Always.